Home Assistant 2023.5 is here and along with it comes chapter two of Year of the Voice, which of course is the mission and goal for the Home Assistant project this year. This release has tons of new features. Most of them are definitely voice related, but there is some other hidden goodies to enjoy as usual. Let's just get in and talk about the first one. First up, we most definitely have to talk about all of the new voice features because there is so many in this release. So last week, Home Assistant held a dedicated live stream that was all about chapter two of Year of the Voice, where they demoed all of the new voice features coming out in this release, which was really cool to see. First up, however, though, before we get into those new features and demos, it first makes most sense to talk about something called Assistant Pipelines. If you head over into Settings, you'll find a new menu called Voice Assistants. And if you click on that menu, it's gonna take you into a new page where you can configure pipelines. And what is a pipeline, you might ask? Good question. A pipeline basically allows you to configure all of the components that make up Assist and how they work. So the conversation agent component, the text-to-speech component, and the speech-to-text component can be configured here inside of a pipeline. And a pipeline is a core critical function for interacting with Home Assistant using your voice. What is really cool is that you can add multiple pipelines with different configurations for each one that can be used throughout Home Assistant. This is really useful if you want to test some different configs or perhaps you have a multi-language household, then pipelines is gonna be really useful for you and especially multi-pipelines. You need to have at least one pipeline configured before you can use any of the new assist functionality. And when you create multiple pipelines, you can set one of them to be the preferred pipeline that will be used by default. This new dashboard also allows you to toggle which entities are exposed to voice assistance too, so you can quickly and easily toggle and untoggle them, which is a much needed addition. If you subscribe to Nabicasa, then you'll also be able to configure how entities are exposed to Amazon as well as Google Home in this menu too. Finally, the pipeline page also allows you to debug voice assistant features so you can dig in and see what's happening and why something isn't working as intended if you need to from this page. And it gives you a ton of useful information. You can get to them by selecting the pipeline that you used and then hitting the three dots in the top right hand corner and selecting debug. This will bring up useful information such as what the spoken words that were recognized were, as well as the processing time and other useful debug info. All right, so let's get into some of the cool voice features now that have been added to 2023.5, starting with the first iteration of the ESP Home powered smart speakers. This iteration allows you to take an ESP32 with a microphone and speaker and a button and gives you push to talk voice commands. Press the button, give your voice command and Home Assistant will immediately start processing the command and act on it, then give you a response through the speaker. Turn on the kitchen lights. Set the kitchen lights to blue. Turn off the kitchen lights. This is done with two new Home Assistant add-ons available as of this release too. One called Whisper, which handles the speech to text element, and one called Piper, which handles the text to speech element. Both of which can work entirely locally with zero cloud processing, even on a Raspberry Pi. And I think that really shows here in terms of speed of how it handles those commands, which Set are really snappy, unlike anything we've seen in voice assistant so far. Really cool to see. This video is just an overview of the new features in 2023.5. But if you do want me to do a full guide on how to enable all of the cool new voice stuff in this release, then drop a comment down below, below the like button, and we can certainly make that happen. These little ESP powered speakers and microphones will be really cool to just have like sitting on your desk. You can just reach out, press the button, give your command and have something happen. Really useful, I think. Now, many of you, myself included, are looking forward to wake word detection, which the devs have mentioned is coming. It's just a really difficult thing to do locally. So chapter one and now chapter two of Year of the Voice are all building blocks heading towards wake word detection. So it's not in this release yet, but we do have push to talk and it is moving ever closer towards that wake word detection. 
Another cool thing that was added was the ability to use voice over IP or VoIP, which allowed you to take an old school analog phone, hook that into Home Assistant and talk directly to the assist feature through the phone, which is pretty amazing. Turn on the plant light. Turned on light. And it works with pretty much any phone that has an RJ11 connector, which will make for some pretty unique and interesting setups. It works by connecting your phone to this little box called the Grandstream HT801, which in turn connects to Home Assistant through voice over IP. If you configure a feature called Off Hook Auto Dial, it means that you simply need to lift the handset and it will immediately be connected to Home Assistant and ready to accept commands. You can also speak multiple commands and it will keep listening. So in theory, that means that you can have a phone that is on speakerphone, constantly listening and Home Assistant will keep responding to all of your voice commands, though I would probably not recommend that. Hi, what is your name? It's Amy, Mario. Mario, how are you doing? Wahoo, I'm doing great. Finally, if you are a Nabucasa subscriber or you want to become a Nabucasa subscriber, a new feature you get as part of your subscription is access to the Home Assistant Cloud speech to text and text to speech services, which can be enabled inside of your assist pipelines if you want to. The key there is the if you want to part. The big thing that everyone wants is local voice control, which is what Home Assistant is doing this year, but now you have the option to enable one, two, or none of the cloud components to supplement your voice pipeline. But there is zero requirement to use the cloud if you don't want to, and everything can be done locally. It's just nice to have the option to choose whatever you want to do. And because I mentioned earlier that you can create multiple pipelines, you could have a local pipeline and then also a cloud pipeline and have them doing different things or just for testing purposes. More options is always more good. Finally, for the voice stuff, Blueprints now have a new selector that Blueprint makers can use, which allow the user to select the assist pipeline as well as the language, which should be useful for automations and blueprints. All right, so that was quite a lot of voice stuff. There is definitely a lot more voice stuff in this release, but it's a bit more technical under the hood type of stuff outside of the scope of this video. But we do have a couple of other items that weren't voice related in this release too. Starting with webhooks, which have been extended to support the get method now inside of the UI. And you can now limit webhooks to only work on your local network, which is nice for security purposes as well as set which HTTP methods can trigger which webhooks. Nice. If you are a Home Assistant Yellow user, then you can now control the built-in activity LEDs on the Yellow Now 2, allowing you to turn them off for that stealthy look. You can do that from inside of the hardware page inside of the settings menu, and these options will show up if you are running a Yellow. Finally, for the little things this month, firstly, the Matter integration now supports covers, which is good. I've actually been doing a lot of testing and troubleshooting matter on Home Assistant recently and I've definitely been using those. Backups should now also happen quicker than ever before thanks to improvements made by B Draco, of course. You can now set up multiple instances of the OpenAI conversation integration for different prompts. And finally, the built-in shopping list can now be sorted thanks to a new service. As for new integrations this month, we return to form by adding six new integrations in this release, a couple of which are related to the new voice features. And we also see four new integrations available to set up from the UI instead of YAML. Neat. In terms of breaking changes, a nice small list this release and not seeing anything jump out as critical, which is of course great to see, but make sure to have a read through of the breaking changes for yourself before updating. And that is about it for this release. The focus for this release was certainly on improving and adding new voice features and functionality, and is of course the focus for this year with Year of the Voice. But interested to know which new feature you enjoyed the most. For me, it's probably definitely the push to talk stuff on the ESP home side. I think this will be really useful for like having it at a desk and where it's within arm's reach, reaching out, pressing the button and having your voice command act on whatever you want inside of Home Assistant. So I think that is pretty cool. 
but let me know your favorite new feature from this release down in the comments. Make sure to hit that like button and get subscribed if you haven't already. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.